Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and before we get started on tonight's story, I'm going to let you know about two ways to find more stories from this author. How to Build a House, Strange, Unsettling, and Unforgettable Tales, Where Nightmares Dwell, and House with 100 Doors and Other Dark Tales Never Sleep Again, both by Travis Brown, or Grand Theft Motto, the author of tonight's story. And you can find both in the description down below, available now on Amazon. And now, on to tonight's story. I always suspected that my dad's barbershop was haunted. And heck, he used to make that claim himself. A lot of customers, particularly the old timers, had their own little superstitions, their favorite chairs, and days that they avoided coming in for a haircut. My dad, the barber, was the worst of all, though. The man would only use one particular brand of scissors and another for electric razors. He used regular straight razors a good bit, too, except for one antique blade with a pearl handle that he refused to handle. Most curious of all, Dad would always leave the last chair in the corner empty, no matter how packed the shop got. No one would be seated in that chair. He never told me why, only that it was tradition. Dad passed away a few months back. I found him at the barber shop, slumped in one of the chairs, looking for all the world like he was sleeping. It was never my plan to get into the family business. As of last spring, I was still in college, working on my degree, but when Dad died, somebody had to take care of the family, so I got the certifications I needed, and I started cutting hair. Luckily, Dad prepped me for years growing up, and I didn't scare away any of the old customers. Not at first. However, I noticed some of the guys looking a little nervous when they came in. Eventually, a few of the regulars began dropping off. I decided to ask Bill, one of my dad's favorite clients, to hang out after work at the shop one day so I could ask his advice. What am I doing wrong, Bill? I asked. What's causing folks to leave? I was sweeping up for the day. Shop closed and quiet. Bill sat in his favorite chair sipping a beer. Well, Joey, I'm glad you asked me to stay late, he replied. I didn't mean to have a word with you. The reason you're scaring away the old timers is simple. Not respecting your dad's rules. I bristled at that a bit and I leaned my broom against the wall. Are you saying I'm, I'm not doing a good job running my dad's shop? Oh, no, no, no. Bill said, hands held up in a calm gesture. You're doing a great job of cutting hair. You're personable. Everybody likes you. It's just... What? Kid, you're not following the rules. You're mixing brands, using all the chairs. Oh, superstitious stuff. Bill stood up. Might sound silly to you, but traditions meant a lot to your dad. To all of us. The old guys, at least. We'd just like to see you respect that. I nodded. I told Bill I'd consider it. We shook hands and he left locking the door behind him at my request. I went back to cleaning up, but Bill's words stuck with me. Dad's favorite straight razor, the one with the pearl handle, was sitting in its usual place of honor next to one of the mirrors in the corner. It's starting to gather dust since I wasn't polishing it as much as my dad did. Or at all. I picked up the razor and I opened it. The blade still looked as sharp as ever. I suppressed a chill. I felt like the temperature in the barbershop dropped by 10 degrees in as many seconds. The lights flickered. I heard a squeak and I... I looked in the corner. The last chair, the one my dad always left empty, was facing me. I was positive that I left it turned towards the counter and mirror earlier that day. Maybe the place really is haunted. I muttered, closing the razor and placing it on the shelf. I'd meant the line as a joke, but it came out as almost a question. The barbershop was warming up again, but I began to feel like I wasn't alone. I considered leaving and skipping my usual closing routine. That would be, admittedly, that I was afraid. Though, the my dad's superstitions were more than comfortable little rituals. I went back to cleaning up, polishing the mirrors in front of the chair, and when I reached the last chair in the corner, a special one, I felt a wild urge rise up in me. 
I sat down. Immediately, the temperature in the room plummeted. I saw my breath come out in a cold, white cloud. There was a tinkling sound. I, I turned to see the pearl-handled razor vibrating on its shelf. Joey. The voice sounded familiar. Terribly, impossibly familiar. I swiveled in my chair until I was facing the mirror. The lights flickered again. In the flash of darkness, I saw my dad's reflection in the mirror standing behind me, except he didn't look entirely like my dad. His face was stretched and blurry, constantly shifting and reforming. After a moment, it clarified and looked like my dad, only younger. Much younger. He looked like he was my age. I saw his reflection shimmer and turned to look at something towards the front of the shop. Suddenly, I could hear a warble that slowly crystallized into my dad's voice, just like his reflection. The voice was decades younger than the last time I saw him. Sorry, we're closed, I heard him say. I glanced at the razor on the shelf. It was shaking like a box of alarm clocks. I realized that I was shaking too. I, I swallowed a scream. The room was growing colder by the moment. I turned back to the mirror to see frost collecting around the edges. My dad's reflection was still looking away towards the front of the shop. I changed the angle of the chair and saw who he was talking to. A man, very young and skinny, dressed in a moth-eaten hoodie. While I watched, the man pulled out a knife. I saw his mouth move but couldn't hear the words. Still, it was easy enough to guess that this was some kind of robbery, albeit a, a pathetic one. Get out, I heard my dad say. Just get out of here. I saw the handle of the pearl grip razor poking out of my dad's white barber coat. The burglar, barely more than a teen, moved suddenly, but my dad was quicker. It was hard to follow, but there was a spurt of blood that made me duck. I poked my head back up and realized it was only the phantom reflection of blood as seen through the mirror. Now there was a new image. My dad in his white jacket stained red, kneeling over a man that attacked him. Dad was holding the young guy's hand. The burglar's throat ripped open by the razor. The man kept trying to speak, but only blood came out. Dad was crying. In an instant, the mirror was back to normal and the shop was warm again. He stood up, shaking. It was self-defense, I said. It wasn't Dad's fault. But I knew that wouldn't have mattered to my dad. He was a good man, kind. Even if he was justified in taking a life, to protect himself. The guilt would have weighed heavy on him. All of Dad's superstitions, his respect for the razor and leaving a chair open, clicked. The seat was a sign of respect for the man who died there on the floor all those years ago. And the, the razor... Used as a weapon, he could never cut hair again. But he wouldn't throw it away. Dad would keep it as a reminder of one of the worst nights of his life. I took a deep breath and I looked back at the chair in the corner. It was facing the counter again and the, the razor with the pearl handle was still... Instead of running out of the barbershop screaming, I went back to cleaning up. I finally understood my dad's superstitions. And I, I'd be sure to honor them in the future. The shop was haunted. But as long as it was treated with respect, I knew it would stay quiet. Then I knew the regulars would come back. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Kiwi Pasta, And as always, I want to tell you thank you so much for watching tonight's video. If you guys are interested in finding new books from authors that you hear of on this channel, please pay attention to the links in the description down below. For one, you can always get a hold of my books, which are the Creepypasta Collections Volume 1 and Volume 2, but also from a bunch of my other friends, such as Jack Townsend, where Tales from the Gas Station Volume 4 is currently available. You can find a link in the description as well as a link to all of my audiobooks I've done for volumes one through three. And yes, trust me, 
I'm going to be working on four. It's just going to take me a while. And as always, I want to give a very big thank you to everybody who is on my Patreon. That means everybody. Everyone who is from the $1 tier all the way up to the God, why do you pledge that much tier? But I especially want to give a big thank you to Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Kyle Resnack, Happy Birthday, Ollie Whale, David Martin, Scarrington the Unkempt, Angelus, Spanky, Snoochy Boochies, Autistic Spidey, Freddy, Seclude, Lupta Galvin, That Creepy Chick, Tyler Fletcher, Rebecca Harper, Merxenum, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier the Cheyenne, Demix, Sean Cato Baker, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Rob Likes Sharp Things, Chaos Arts, Cryolinian, Zachary Grofius, Lord Life's Best, Goreng Tri Magacy, Maria Walker, Pain Gravy, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Aka Limchok, Dirt Diver 030, Matt Bach, Naughty Devil, Voice of Sands, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Chelly J, Jeremy H, Reltazol, Ficomel, Nana, Deleted Account, Melted Lake, Tali Sue, William King, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Hawk 764 Lambda M98, Harley, Sashi Suzaku, Croconut 509, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Nicholas Zicardi, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Benjamin Wilvart, Kiri the Sloth, Fester's Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, and Corey Kenshin. As always, you guys are the MVPs. Everybody who's on that list, everybody who's on that Patreon, everybody who's in the description, thank you so much. And if you'd like to join this list of names that I horribly mispronounce, head over to patreon.com slash And as always, everyone, sweet dreams. <laughs>